now it's time to add some dynamic functionality to our date component. Any view in a, in a rich client application, a JavaScript application, consists of two things. One is the static portion, which is the markup, which is your HTML stuff. The other is the dynamic portion, which is your JavaScript or TypeScript stuff. The static portion is going to remain the same no matter how many times you load the page. But the dynamic portion is actually calculated. It's computed on the client side, right? JavaScript runs on the client side, figures out what the dynamic content should be, and then that's what gets rendered on the view. In the date component, simple. The date itself is the dynamic portion. It needs to be computed on the JavaScript code and then passed over to the view in order for it to be rendered. So for these kind of interactions, what you need is a way for you to create a value, create something in the JavaScript code and then have the view or the HTML render that portion. You're going to have HTML code, but in between, interspersed in that HTML code needs to be dynamic values that are generated by JavaScript. So you need some kind of a handoff. Calculate some value in the JavaScript file or the TypeScript file in this case, and then display that value in the HTML. Let's do that now. So what I'm going to do is create a member variable off this class. The date component is a class and it doesn't have any member variables. It has a constructor that has this odd looking function called ng on in it, which we'll get back to in a bit, but it doesn't have any member variables. So I'm going to create a member variable. I'm going to call this message and uh, I'm going to have this be a string. Now message is a member variable which doesn't have a value, so I'm going to create a value here. Let me call this hello for now, right? Nothing too fancy. It's a member variable which has the value of hello. Now in my code, I can change the value of this thing. I can figure out what the value should be. I can compute this dynamically at runtime on the user's browser. Now, just computing the value is not enough. I want to show this in the view. If you look at the browser, there is nothing dynamic here. It's just this paragraph with the text date works. Now, what if I want to show the contents of this message variable in the view. Over here, I do this by using a special syntax. The syntax is what's famously referred to as double curlies in the Angular world. So you basically have this double curly open and double curly close. Right? you see this? Two curly braces which open and two curly braces which close. And within these two, right, within the open and the close, you can reference member variables of your component class. Here it happens to be message. So what I can do is I can just put this name over here, message. And this is an indicator for Angular to go fetch this value from the class which is creating that component. All right. So what this does is it's going to get the hello string and it's going to embed it in this markup. So look what happens when I save this and open the browser. You see, hello gets displayed. So this is HTML, which is in the markup. This is a reference to a member variable of the class that's backing this template. If the value of this member variable changes, this is going to get changed as well. Now if here, I change this to add uh, more exclamation points. And here you see, this changes as well. So this is great because now what we can do is we can compute the value of this at runtime and uh, since we have referenced this over here, this is automatically going to get updated. For instance, what I can do here is rather than have a hello, I can say new date. So I'm going to call the date constructor to create a new date. Now notice since it's TypeScript, I cannot assign the date object to a string variable. This complains it's of a different type. So what I can do is I can do a dot to date string, which is a method on a date object, which converts it to a string. And now I press save, notice what happens. I get the date. This is creating a date instance when the object is being created. You remember I told you that when the selector is used, Angular creates a new instance of this date component class. This instance is going to have a message member variable, and when the instance was created, it creates a new date object and gets the to state string of that object, get a string, 
which is the value which contains the date, and it's going to assign it to message. So when the app.component.html happens to use this thing, this instance is going to create this message and it's going to render this HTML file. This HTML file references the message along with a bunch of other HTML markup. This message is going to print whatever message is rendered over here, whatever the value is, it happens to be date, and that's what gets printed over here. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Now with this, we have a date component. Here I can get rid of the date works stuff. We don't need this. And now we have a paragraph which contains a message. Now every time the date refreshes, if I were to run this tomorrow, it's gonna say December 21st, 2017, all right? So with this, we have the beginnings of a date component. You can have a bunch of components, uh, sorry, a bunch of member variables like this. You can have as many member variables as you want and provide them with values. You can do this in the constructor also, by the way, when the object is being created. And uh, you can refer them all using double curlies in your markup. You can refer up to as many of these member variables as you want, and it's gonna plug them in. You can do this multiple times as well. So the message gets printed that many number of times. You can put them in a proper structure. Now we have a good amount of markup here, but what this markup is doing is it's a combination of your static markup and your dynamic content that's getting rendered from the component class. So if I switch here, so you see it gets both the paragraphs rendered to the view. This uh, mechanism of having some value in the class and then showing it in the view is what's referred to as data binding. It's called data binding because it's not a one-time thing. It The view automatically reflects the changes that happen to the value in the class. So you see here there is a message. Now if the message were to change, if this were to change sometime during the execution of your Angular application, the view is automatically going to update the value. All right, so that's why it's referred to as data binding. In this case, it's referred to as one-way data binding in the sense that the component can change the value of its member variable and the view reads from it, right? So there is something that's sending the value, which is the TypeScript class, and there is something that's reading the value, which is your HTML markup. So it's a one-way flow of data from the TypeScript file to your HTML markup. It's called one-way data binding and it's done by using this double curly syntax.